to Value BC, Prosperity for All. My name is Trish Garner and I'm the community organizer with the BC Poverty Reduction Coalition. We're so pleased that you're joining us tonight. Uh, we are waiting for C. Swiss to come and join us to start off the evening uh, with an Indigenous acknowledgement and welcome. Um, but she's late. I'm not too worried because she's always late. She wouldn't mind me saying that. Uh, so we'll, we'll welcome her in when she arrives. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping logistics items. Uh, the washrooms are just outside this door, uh, down the hallway and to the left, um, and they are trans-inclusive washrooms. Um, you can keep your phones on at this event, and we encourage pictures and tweeting and other social media uh, networking. Uh, so please hashtag make poverty public. That's our election hashtag, so please do that. Uh, we have sign language interpretation here tonight, um, so if there is anyone um, who requires that, um, please let uh, Taylor and Farrar know over here and they can uh, target their um, sign language towards you. So this evening's event is the second in our speaker series, uh, Value BC, Equality, Justice and Prosperity for All which is an exciting project in the lead up to the provincial election featuring high profile speakers to raise awareness and generate productive conversations about our collective issues and responsibilities. Our first was Equality for All with David Morley, the CEO of UNICEF Canada, we brought in from Toronto in January. And we'll be back next month with Justice for All to hear about experiences and successes with their poverty reduction plan in Newfoundland and Labrador, uh, which is a great comparison with our lack of a poverty reduction plan because they used to have the worst poverty rate along with us. They put a plan in place and they've seen huge success. So we'll be bringing in someone from Newfoundland and Labrador to, to share that success with us. Tonight our focus is on prosperity for all as we're here this evening to discuss the challenging and complex issues of increasing income inequality in BC and how to ensure that all British Columbians share the prosperity in our province. This is a very timely discussion in our global context, economic inequality and the very real fear that's associated with that um, is driving these recent events with Brexit in the UK, um, Trump in the US. So we need to recognize that and find a way to push, push forward with a progressive vision. So that's what our panelists will be doing tonight, uh, discussing creating vibrant, diverse and inclusive communities that leave no one behind. I'd like to share uh, a short story that describes the approach of the BC Poverty Reduction Coalition and will help ground our discussion for the rest of the evening. So in a small town, a group of fisher folk gathered down at the river. Not long after they got there, a child came floating down the rapids, calling for help. One of the group on the shore quickly dived in and pulled the child out. Minutes later, another child came, then another, and then many more children were coming down the river. Soon everyone was diving in and dragging children to the shore, then jumping back in to save as many as they could. In the midst of all this frenzy, one of the colleagues was seen walking away. One of the group was seen walking away. Her colleagues were irate. How could she leave when there were so many children to save? But after long hours, to everyone's relief, the flow of children stopped and the group could finally catch their breath. At that moment, their colleague came back. They turned on her and angrily shouted, how could you walk off when we needed everyone here to save the children? And she replied, it occurred to me that someone ought to go upstream and find out why so many kids were falling into the river. What I found is that the old wooden bridge had several planks missing, and when some children tried to jump over the gap, they couldn't make it and fell through into the river. So I got someone to fix the bridge. So that's the work that we do at the Poverty Reduction uh, Coalition. And that's the work that our, our panelists do in, in their life and work too. So ensuring prosperity for all and communities that leave no one behind is all about building that bridge. The question is what does it look like and how do we make it happen? And so good thing we have our fantastic panel here to help us grapple with these challenges. I've just seen Cease walk in the door. So um, thanks for coming Cease. I'd like to introduce Cease Wiss who will uh, welcome us uh, tonight. So Cease is a uh, Squamish ethnobotanist, media artist, educator, food security activist. She's been very vocal in the Idle No More movement and has stood up with other Indigenous people 
to fight for First Nations rights to hunt, gather, and fish in their traditional territories. Please join me in welcoming Cease. Welcome, you are in the shared lands and waters of the Tislewatu, the Homakwim, and the Skokomish of Old Okomea. And uh, yeah, just want to share a little moment of uh, recognizing the people of the land here and, uh, and I guess uh, just acknowledge a more meaningful way than saying it and but I appreciate people recognizing that when they do these events especially when you're looking at anti-poverty work uh, today my anti-poverty work was making sure I did my part in cooking for my roommates so <laughs> apologize for being a couple of minutes late but that's uh, I live in a shared accommodation and it allows me to have dignified access to more culturally appropriate living. And uh, so yeah, and I think that's a lot about what you're all talking about tonight. So I'm gonna just share a song. Um, I'm gonna do greeting of the day. This uh, song comes from the village of Khoai Khoai, which is a little west of here in a place you know as Stanley Park. But it is a place of many gathering sites and village sites around that island. And um, this one in particular is a, is a village site used by the three nations for special dancers, the Squai Squai dancers, and they're very sacred. They do the work to bless us for funerals, for uh, picture showing when we do a memorial after somebody's been gone for a while, for coming of age rites, for everything, for weddings, you know. Anyway, so I'm gonna just uh, share that song. And the song is, uh, belongs to Sequalia, so we call it the Sequalia Slolum. And Sequalia of back in the day was Aunt Sally, and the one known as Sequalia today is Amwanic. And yeah, so it's his greeting of the day. You can just sit and enjoy. And I hope it puts you all in a good frame of mind for tonight, for your good word. Anhaf, anhaf squalowens, my heart is lifted. Chen Quimman told me, good work everybody. Haichka. <coughs> Thank you. 
pledge that I'm not swallowing this. We'll see. Thank you. Thanks so much, Cis. Um, it felt like you were joined by, by other drummers and singers, the waves reverberating through the microphone, um, people say. And then I started to think, all my relations, if you actually think about what that phrase means, it is so powerful. And if we all actually thought about other people as all my relations, our family, our relations, our neighbors, um, we would have such a, a much deeper connection to folks and perhaps we wouldn't be in the troubles we're in. 